Hello everyone, reporting today for Fun Robotics Network, I'm Ab Haas, and with me here is Team 2077, the Indubitables. They have been absolutely fantastic in the Jemison division, taking it all the way home and coming out as the Jemison division winner. Super strong matches and grand finals, just absolutely insane robot. Really long arm, really long linkage, but still super, super fast, and I can't wait to learn about how to make all that happen on Behind the Bot. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Studica Robotics is everything your team needs to build, learn, and compete. Check out their FTC starter kit, intake hub kit, and odometry wheel options at studica.com slash robots. Teams in the USA can get up to 25% off and apply for grants at studica.com slash robots. Build your alliance with so many other FIRST alumni who go to Kettering University. Every student at Kettering experiences their cutting-edge co-op programs that seamlessly blend the professional and academic worlds. Kettering co-ops are a fully immersive working experience at the leading edge of industry. Head on over to kettering.edu slash FIRST to learn more about their incredible programs and to get more information. All right, guys, so let's start with the overall robot design. I remember early season, I saw this beautiful white robot from you guys, lots of aluminum and plastic and things like that. You guys have now pivoted to this full carbon fiber design. Why go with that rebuild? Uh, we went with this rebuild because we wanted to cut down on weight as well as increasing our durability because we found that our aluminum began to bend a little bit under a lot of contact and that we were around 29 pounds. We wanted to cut that down for increased speed while so, driving. Through. Yeah, and how heavy are you guys now? Oh, uh, we are now close to around, say, 26-ish pounds. Okay, yeah, awesome. And as far as, like, speed goes, I think a lot of that comes into drive ratio as well. Are you pushing that to the faster, like, 435 range, or are you still going a little bit lighter there? Oh, yeah, we run a 435 drive train at one-to-one -one ratio. Awesome, yeah, cool. Jumping into the intake, I see this super, super long linkage. I know teams, a lot of teams will go with the slides. Why go with that, or we'll go with the string. Why go with that super long linkage? Uh, we want the linkage because we want to like, experiment with different types of extension. And also we had a hard time packaging uh, string for a robot. So we decided to try out linkage because it's very easy to implement and isn't too complex and it won't break as often. Yeah, and when teams have arms as long as these, how do you recommend they really make sure they're super rigid and sturdy? Uh, honestly, I recommend using a few, like if you have Fusion 360, use the Fusion Structural Analysis tool or just use really durable materials such as carbon fiber or aluminum. Cool, yeah. Can we see that intake go in and out a couple times if you of don't course, mind? Yeah. yeah. Fantastic, yeah. And as far as linkage lengths and go, were those completely based on the geometry, like the extension amount you needed? Or did you also play with like how fast you wanted to go out and stuff like that? Uh, we also we used the calculation to find out like how long we needed to be as well as like how, like the perfect length to find out which, to find speed, to find the correct speed. Yeah, yeah, that, that makes a ton of sense. Now, jumping into the intake claw over here, I see a ton of degrees of freedom. Walk me through the differential you have going on and if there's anything you think that really makes it super solid. Uh, we kind of just wanted to have just whole range of motion, be able to grab about like anywhere needed. Uh, yeah, no, that, that makes sense. And as far as like difficulties go when like designing this or programming this, anything that popped up, especially with homing and stuff with the software? Uh, specifically for the software, um, we just wanted to, I, it was a lot of, just a lot of calculation to figure out the gear ratios and the axon servos and then how fast, how fast they were going to move to make sure that we were at the efficient speed. Cool. Yeah, now jumping into the transfer sequence, can you guys show me your transfer or just the, the general sequence and then we'll jump into the super long outtake arm that you guys have going on. So the transfer sequence here, it can start out with, uh, we can just grab it. Mm -hmm. So for this transfer sequence, we can grab it regularly and then we transfer and it automatically goes into our deposit position for samples. Yeah, and I feel like teams have had a, uh, like a lot of teams have had difficulty making sure the transfer is very consistent. Is there anything specific you guys did to make sure you had that consistency? Yeah, so we uh, certainly had some power draw issues earlier in the season, and that's just because we use 11 uh, axon uh, servos, which draw a lot of power, and we have uh, pretty high PWMs on those servos. But uh, through scheduling the actions in uh, our transfer sequences and then lowering the uh, PWMs as much as possible while still uh, having a high efficiency, we were able to make our transfer sequence uh, 
both uh, fast and reliable. Awesome, yeah, and jumping into this super long arm, why go with that as, com uh, as compared to some design that sort of extends, you know, with another linkage or anything like that? Yeah, so uh, the long arm that we went with, uh, it's something that we adopted from our uh, version one robot. And uh, with that, we were able to uh, score specimens, which we uh, do uh, mainly. Uh, that allowed us to that allowed us to uh, both score and deposit uh, alongside our differential without having to turn around because uh, we're able to grab forwards and then score backwards uh, without having to uh, rotate the drive truck. Yeah, and as far as like any tipping issues go or making sure your servos don't break from all that load, what did you guys do to mitigate those? Uh, first thing we did moving from our V1 to our V2 robot is switching from uh, direct drive on our servos to gearing to protect our servo spline because throughout the season we damaged a few of our servos on our outtick arm due to our us mounting it on our servo spline. Yeah, that, that makes a ton of sense. So that gearing definitely reduces the shock loads and things like that. Now talking about driving, your guys' specimen cycles are just absolute lights out, super, super fast. How? So uh, with our specimen cycling, uh, we've been asked a lot. We've been asked a lot whether or not that's uh, manual or we have an automated process. Uh, we experimented with some automated processes earlier in the season, uh, but we found through driver practice that we were uh, able to account for the variability um, with the manual input. And um, alongside a lot of driver practice and um, the sequences that we've programmed to uh, make it easier for our drivers, uh, we've been able to decrease our cycle times uh, exponentially. And talking about the sequences, can you give me an example of like one or two that are really key? Yeah, so Baron, do you wanna demonstrate? So uh, the sequences for the driver two, um, it's literally one button that we have programmed to two states. Uh, the first state is uh, the arm being down. I'm gonna show that. So we start out with the arm down and then we have one button to close the claw and then the, when we press the same button, it flips back into the scoring position. And then when we press that same button again, it goes down to score, waits a half a second, and then flips back uh, to pick up another specimen. Yeah, awesome. And Indubitables, thank you guys so much. I mean, you guys had just absolutely fantastic matches this season, just killing it on the specimen game, match after match. Reporting for Fun Robotics Network, I'm Ab Haas, and this is Team 20077, the Indubitables. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. Build your alliance with so many other FIRST alumni who go to Kettering University. Every student at Kettering experiences their cutting-edge co-op programs that seamlessly blend the professional and academic worlds. Kettering co-ops are a fully immersive working experience at the leading edge of industry. Head on over to kettering.edu slash FIRST to learn more about their incredible programs and to get more information. StudiCut Robotics is everything your team needs to build, learn, and compete. Check out their FTC starter kit, intake hub kit, and odometry wheel options at studica.com slash robots. Teams in the USA can get up to 25% off and apply for grants at studica.com slash robots.